Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel and it is time for another sheet load rewind. I hope you'll stick around, see what I'm going to create as we rewind back to October 2019. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. For the past few months, I have been stopping by with an almost monthly sheet load rewind. Now, I didn't have one last month because there was not a September 2019 sheet load of cards. But in October 2019, there was. So today, we're going to be taking a look at the sketch, which is a fun fold, and switching it up just a little bit. If after seeing today's video, you want to download the printable for free, you do just need to be a subscriber to my channel, and I'll tell you at the end of the video how you can do that. For now though, let's go ahead and take a look at the sketch. Like I already mentioned, this sketch is a fun fold. It's kind of a Z fold here that has a 3x4 on the front. When the card is open flat, you'll notice you only decorate one side of your card base, but then when it's folded, you see this part on the front. Now originally, this yielded eight cards, but as I was preparing last night and getting papers together, and I saw that I needed four coordinating pattern papers, I was like, Alicia, are you crazy? It's hard to find four coordinating pattern papers that don't kind of battle with each other. So I ended up picking out three, which then we will only yield six cards, but I think that's pretty good for a sheet load too. So I will show you a little bit later how I'm going to make different cuts, but what we'll do, we will have one pattern paper be the focal point. The next pattern paper will be the two pieces, these two skinny pieces, instead of having them different. And then the third and final pattern paper will be on the inside here. Now the file is actually two pages, but my printer was accidentally set to double siding. So today I just have one piece with the information on both sides. This is a nice way to cut down on paper and it works just as well as printing out two pages. Let's go ahead and take a look at the main supplies I'm going to be using today. For my focal point, I'm going to be using the Ornamental Christmas Stamp Set from Not Too Shabby. This was part of the October box of the month. I will be using the ornament, and then I haven't decided yet if I'm going to be using the words or some of the images for the cards. And also, I don't know if I'm going to use a color ink to match this kind of brick color or if I'm going to do some heat embossing with silver because there is some silver foil on this paper. So we'll find out during the process. For my card stocks, for the focal point, I just got out scraps of off-white card stock. And for my card bases and my mat for the 3x4 pattern paper, I got out a light gray that I thought matched the paper well. The three papers that I chose came from the Cranberry Christmas Pad, which was a hot buy from Michaels, and I tried to go with a more patterned one, and then a couple coordinating ones that had the same colors. Now this might look like a solid on the camera, but it's got like that brick red background, and there are some little snowflakes and sprinkles on it. Now, as I go into the process, I will let you know about any other products or tools I use, but if I ever leave you with any questions, you can leave those in that comment section below, and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! Before we get to the process, I do have a special channel member shout out. I would like to welcome Dr. Cheneva Early to my Paper Trimmer Level membership. Thank you so much for your support. 
Thank you as well to all of my channel members. And if you're interested in finding out more about the perks of channel membership, I would love for you to check out the link in the description box below. To get started today, I'm gonna to be cutting my three pieces of pattern paper just like the diagram on the cutting guide side. Now something to keep in mind at the bottom where it says 1.875 inches, that is the same as one and seven eighths inches. I'm gonna start by cutting the strips to the width given. So the first one I cut to four inches, the next two I cut at one and seven eighths inches each, and then finally I cut a strip that is three inches wide. Then these pieces are going to get rotated and cut to the final heights given on the printable. Once that first piece was cut down, I made the same cuts on the remaining two pieces. Now while I work on that, I did want to give you a heads up about a special giveaway I have going on. Over the weekend, I shared the last vlog in my Stamp Joy 2021 series, and at the end, I tell you how you can win a $50 gift certificate to Tailored Expressions. If you are watching this video before November 6th of 2021, you still have time to get entered. I will have the video linked in the description box below. Once I had my pattern papers cut, I brought in my three pieces of gray cardstock to cut down and fold for the card bases. All you need to do for this is cut your cardstock in half to eight and a half by five and a half, and then the first fold you're gonna make is just a standard half fold for an A2 card. I did go ahead and reinforce my crease with a bone folder. And then after I did that, you just turn the card back and then you fold the front cover back on itself to meet the center fold. And you'll see there it stands up nicely on its own. I continue to do the same for all the card stocks until I have those six card bases. I brought in another piece of that same gray cardstock and I'm gonna cut it down to the dimensions of CS1. Now the original printable had only four cut for each eight and a half by 11, but if you rotate the cardstock, this will actually fit the six that we need. So my first cut is at four and a quarter inches in half, and then I put it back in the cutter just stacked on top of each other and cut three times at three and a quarter. I almost forgot about this last piece of cardstock. I need a piece that will go inside the card for my personal message. And since I was using scraps for my oval focal point, I kind of forgot I needed this one. I cut this single piece of off-white cardstock to six pieces that were three inches by four inches, and the process is pretty much the same as the gray pieces I just cut. Now all of the pieces are cut for the cards, so I'm gonna mix and match the patterns. I start with piece A from pattern one, then grab two of piece B from pattern two, and then finally I grab piece C from pattern three. Now for the next card, it's kind of the same, but for the two skinny strips, I'm gonna skip pattern two and go over to pattern three and grab two of those. Then I'm gonna come back to the center and grab piece C. I continue this same process until I have six little kind of card kits put together with the patterns for each card. Now it is time to start gluing these pieces together. I'm gonna grab one of those little sets of pattern paper and start putting those onto the card base. The large piece goes on the inside of the card once the adhesive is on the back, and I just try to make sure that I have an even gray border all around that. Then I'm gonna put adhesive on each of the tall skinny strips, and those will go to the sections on the left once again, just trying to keep those centered in their section. Then finally, I take that last piece of pattern paper and I put that on the gray cardstock mat that measures three and a quarter by four and a quarter. 
Now for this next part, you have to be kind of careful. You want to make sure that you do not glue your card shut. So you only want to put adhesive on one half of the back of that card. So I usually just put my three by four up to my card and figure out which half that would be and apply the adhesive. That way when I go to put it on the card front, it still opens nicely and it's not stuck down. And finally, the three by four piece of off-white cardstock will go centered on the inside. Now when you close the card, this will be covered along with your personal message. I continue to put all these cards together in the same way until all six are done. Now while I work on that a little bit, I thought it would be a great time to stop by with the QOTV or question of the video. Today's question is kind of a silly one and it came up because of my channel member live last night. I asked my channel members who joined me the same thing, but I want to know, do you know what a bones or no bones day is? And if you do, what kind of day are you having today? Now I will tell you just quickly what a bones or no bones day is and then in the description box below I'm going to link a video of the owner on the Today Show I think talking a little bit more about it. So there is this gentleman on TikTok, you can also see it on Instagram, who has this adorable 13 year old pug and when he wakes the pug up each day, which the dog's name is Noodle, if the dog stands up on his own, then it's a bones day and you should be productive, go out there, get stuff done. If the dog falls back down, it's a no bones day and it's a day to take care of yourself and kind of relax. I just think it's something funny and today I am having a bones day and that is what Noodle predicted. I have been getting lots of stuff done. I can't wait to hear your answer. And if you are going to answer it, please make sure to add the hashtag, hashtag QOTV to your comment so I know that you've answered and would like me to see it. Now back to the process, which is going to be stamping the image. I will be stamping first the ornament with cherry red ink from Gina K Designs. And I just got out some scraps of off-white cardstock and I'm going to set it up so I can stamp two ornaments on each piece. Once I have the stamp in place, I did bring in the die that I was going to use just to make sure two of those would fit onto the cardstock. Then I inked up my ornament, stamped it, and then I rotated the cardstock and stamped it again. When I grabbed the second piece of cardstock, I realized it was skinnier and that it wasn't going to work. So I ended up moving my cardstock over about a quarter of an inch and then doing the same thing, both for this piece and the third. After all six of my ornaments were stamped, it was time to put on the sentiments. I went with Mary, bright and cheer and I stamp two of each into the middle of the ornaments. Now you see there I do have my Versa mark out because these are brand new stamps. I did ink it up with the Versa mark first hoping that it might help a little bit with the staining because red stains stamps like crazy. Now I don't know that it helped but I do think that when you have a stained stamp that just shows that it's loved. After all of the sentiments were on there, I brought in my labels for large from Spellbinders and I cut out each piece for the final cards. Now adding these to your cards, you could definitely add these to the front with some foam tape for extra dimension. But because there was already that extra fold on the left, I decided that I was going to just put mine flat down onto the center piece. I continued adding the sentiment pieces until all six cards had one and then it was time for a little bling. Now you are going to recognize my bling for today. It's my Elizabeth Craft Designs glitter dots. This is a silver slash transparent. They have just this slight silver outline and then the center is clear with glitter in it. These are nice and flat and add lots of sparkle. 
Now normally I would add three to a card front, keeping with the odds, but I'm actually going to end up adding six glitter dots to each card, but I'm going to do it in three sets of two. I place them in different sizes in a triangle kind of shape around the outside of the stamped image. I finish up by adding these to the rest of the cards, and here's a look at the final six. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together today's cards using the October 2019 sheet load of cards. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Now, if you would like to download the October 2019 printable for yourself, here in just a second, I'll tell you where the link is. But before I do that, I do ask that you are a subscriber to my channel before you click on the link and either view it on screen or download it and print it. Now we do go on the honor system here. I don't make you email me with any kind of proof, but please, if you are gonna click on the link, make sure that you have already clicked on that subscribe button below. You are gonna find the link to the October 2019 sheet load of cards right below my Instagram account link in the description box below. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.